Have you ever looked at a new EV release and felt like the conversation is focused on everything except the thing that actually matters? That's exactly what's happening with the Rivian R2. People are excited about the price, the size, the vibe, the potential new camping accessories, but almost nobody is talking about the one upgrade that could completely transform the everyday ownership experience. And here's the twist. It's not flashy, it's not headline friendly, and you won't see it plastered across marketing campaigns. But for real owners, especially those who take long road trips, this quiet change might be the difference between a car that frustrates you at the worst possible moment and one that feels like it was engineered specifically for you. Today, we're diving into that hidden upgrade, the one Rivian strategically redesigned because it addresses the single biggest weakness in the current R1S and R1T. And when you understand what changed and why it changed, you start to realize the R2 isn't just the cheaper Rivian. It might actually be a better one in a critical, real-world way. The R1 lineup is iconic, bold design, incredible capability, and a driving experience that feels more next decade than next year. They're phenomenal vehicles, so phenomenal that many owners keep both the truck and the SUV. But there's no escaping the one reality that limits their impact, the price. With an average transaction cost creeping towards six figures, the R1 family lives in a niche it's beloved by early adopters, but inaccessible to most buyers in the biggest automotive segment in North America. That's where the R2 changes the game. Starting around the mid $40,000 range, the R2 is positioned directly against mainstream gas SUVs like the Toyota RAV4 and Honda CRV. These aren't enthusiast vehicles, they're the default choice for millions of families, commuters, and daily drivers. And Rivian knows this is not just another model launch, this is a survival play. The company has burned billions, and the R2 represents their most important chance to scale production, improve margins, and become a sustainable automaker. But here's a thought-provoking question. Is it possible that a vehicle that costs about half as much as an R1S or R1T could actually be superior in key ways? Surprisingly, yes and much of that comes down to the problem the R2 fixes. To fully understand the impact of the R2 upgrade, you have to see the trajectory Rivian's been on. The company has been aggressively listening to owners and correcting early shortcomings across almost every category. Software has massively improved. Touchscreens are snappier, apps load instantly, and Google Maps is now integrated as a full navigation system. The audio system went from being a disappointment to something genuinely enjoyable, all through software tuning. The autonomy stack dropped Mobileye in favor of an in-house neural network model setting the foundation for faster, more consistent updates. Starting with the 2026 model year, every Rivian ships with a native NACS port, giving drivers seamless access to the world's largest fast charging network. Almost every weakness owners talked about has been addressed, except one, and it's a big one. Thermal performance has been the lingering issue Rivian simply couldn't correct in the R1 using software alone. The thermal management system impacts charging speed, battery health, performance in extreme temperatures, and even cabin comfort. The original thermal design in the R1S and R1T had limited ability to move heat in or out of the battery efficiently. In real-world use, especially during long drives in extreme heat or cold, owners experience charging sessions that slow dramatically, cooling systems that struggle to keep up, and batteries that became heat-soaked far too easily. Once the thermal limits are hit, the battery protects itself by reducing power meaning charging tapers aggressively and cabin cooling can falter. This wasn't a small inconvenience. It was a fundamental limitation of the hardware architecture itself, and it's the one thing Rivian absolutely had to redesign for the R2. Instead of using two stacked layers of smaller 2170 cells with a single cooling plate squeezed between them, Rivian adopts an entirely new battery philosophy. The R2 uses a single flat layer of much larger 4695 cells. 
These taller and wider cells allow Rivian to reorganize the pack into a simpler, more efficient layout. The modules sit in three long rows, and instead of a single cold plate, Rivian uses a ribbon-style cooling path that wraps around the perimeter of the cells. This cooling ribbon dramatically improves thermal performance. It increases surface contact, enhances heat extraction, improves heat distribution, and warms the cells more effectively in cold weather. In other words, the R2 can stay within its ideal temperature range much easier, which allows it to maintain higher charging speeds for longer. This results in more consistent charging, flatter curves, faster recovery after hard driving, and more stable performance during extreme weather. It's the kind of improvement that doesn't look dramatic in a press release, but matters tremendously in everyday reality. To create this pack, Rivian embraced a structural battery design where the pack itself becomes part of the vehicle's floor. This improves rigidity, reduces parts, lowers cost, and frees up interior space. The chemistry inside the cells is tuned not to chase unrealistic 10 minutes to 80% charge rates, but to balance fast charging with energy density and long-term durability. Even with the improved thermal system, Rivian chose to keep the R2 on a 400 volt architecture, not because it couldn't go 800 volt, but because for a mainstream SUV, cost matters more than spec sheet flexing. And with efficient thermal control, a well-engineered 400 volt platform can deliver fast charging speeds very close to higher voltage systems. In fact, the R2 is expected to charge from 10% to 80% in roughly 20 minutes, nearly half the time required for current R1 vehicles. That's a huge real-world improvement, especially for road trips. For shoppers comparing the R2 to gas SUVs like the RAV4 or CRV, the advantages become even clearer. A gas RAV4 burns roughly $10,000 in fuel over five years. An R2 charged mostly at home costs around $3,500 in electricity for the same period. That's nearly $7,000 saved before even considering maintenance. There are no oil changes, no transmission issues, no exhaust system failures, and fewer moving parts overall. Combine that with faster charging, more consistent thermal performance, and direct access to Tesla's supercharging network, and you have a mid-size SUV that is not only cheaper to own, but genuinely easier to road trip with. For the first time, Rivian will offer a mainstream-priced SUV that is as practical as its gas competitors while being significantly cheaper to operate and more pleasant on long journeys. The R2 isn't just a scaled-down Rivian. It's a smarter one. It fixes Rivian's biggest weakness, thermals, with a battery and cooling strategy that delivers the consistency owners have been craving. It charges faster, stays cooler longer, performs better in extreme temperatures, and makes EV ownership feel seamless. It's not the 800-volt leap some people were hoping for, but it's something more meaningful, a real solution to a real problem. And that's why this hidden upgrade may make the R2 the Rivian people most want to own.